In Pisa, 1589, a bright young man wrote a treatise about the center of gravity. His work reached the powerful Florence ruler, the Medici family, which later granted him a position as lecturer at the University of Pisa. This was his starting point of exploring more about gravity and making a well-known experiment later at Pisa Tower. This man is Galileo Galilei. Galileo is not the only scientist that worked on the concept of the center of gravity. Archimedes, who was Galileo's inspiration, already talked about this thousands of years ago. So, what is the center of gravity? Why are these scientists so intrigued by it? Well, before we start the discussion, let's talk about its close relative first, the center of mass. Let's say we have a system whose mass is not distributed equally on each end. When we try to balance the system by applying force on a single point, the system has a tendency to tilt. Either we apply the force near the end with smaller or greater mass. But there is a point on the body that if we apply force on it, then the body will not tilt, thus producing no torque. This point is called the center of mass. As its name suggests, the center of mass emphasizes the mass of the body or system. It is the point that looks as though all the system's mass were concentrated there. Hence, for a uniform object with symmetry, we can simply find its center of mass on its point of symmetry, which is located at the very center of the object. One thing you should remember is that the center of mass may not always lie within the object. If the center of mass emphasizes on the mass, the center of gravity, on the other hand, emphasizes on the weight of the system. Earth attracts an object vertically downward towards its center, and its pull acts on individual elements or atoms on the body. The resultant of all these parallel forces is a single force equal to the weight of the body and acts vertically towards the center of the Earth. This point is called the center of gravity of the body. For a symmetrical object, its gravity center can be found in its geometry. The gravity center of a uniform rod is the point where it is in balance, while for a uniform rectangular and square sheet, the center of gravity is on the diagonal intersection. For asymmetrical objects, we can use plumb line to know its center of gravity. Now, you may feel confused about what the difference between the center of mass and the center of gravity is. The center of mass does not depend on the gravitational field, while the center of gravity does. But thankfully, you don't have to worry much about it. As long as all the elements of the object you're observing are located in a uniform gravitational field, for instance on Earth's surface or near to Earth, the center of mass of that object coincides with its center of gravity. Hence, we can use the term center of mass and center of gravity interchangeably, assuming they refer to the same point. But if the object gets further from Earth, the gravitational field gradually decreases, causing a non-uniform gravitational field and difference in the position of the center of gravity and the center of mass of the object. Knowing the center of gravity is very important to observe a system's equilibrium, especially in construction. Look at the Pisa Tower. As it leans southward, the center of gravity also started shifting. To correct the position of the tower and prevent it from falling, the engineers not only needed to know the soil condition and the tower construction, but also the tower's center of gravity and to keep it on the base. The center of gravity of the tower today doesn't differ much compared to where it was 30 years ago, because the vertical line passing through this center point is always kept within the base to stop the tower from falling over. This is what makes the Pisa Tower among the wonders of the world.